And there's some seats down there. If you want to, uh, to sit down, but feel free to hop up. Um, so it's my job to introduce the theme of the conference um, this morning. And um, as has been read, uh, hopefully you've studied your, your conference booklet from cover to cover by now, but archaeology is about legacy. Um, the decisions we make and the actions we take now impact whether and how future generations access and interact with and benefit from their historic environment. <laughs> They determine who the archaeologists of the future will be and they influence how archaeology is perceived and valued by policymakers and by society. In the face of significant environmental, social and economic challenges, they may even determine whether there is a future for our, for our discipline and our profession. And in Nottingham last year um, at the conference, we identified the need for collaboration to navigate these challenges. The theme for CEPA 2024 takes this step further. The sessions over the next two days will showcase co-creation and partnership and the benefits of cross-disciplinary working. You'll hear about projects and initiatives that change the way you do things and legal legacies. And in thinking about the introduction to the theme, I turned, as, as we so often do to Google, um, to reflect on the meaning of legacy. Um, and amid the potential for substantial and unexpected requests from distant relatives, and I'm still hopeful if you're out there on no wealthy raised arms, um, I found two def dictionary definitions that seem particularly appropriate. One defined legacy as something that's part of your history or that remains from an earlier time. And another defined legacy as a tangible or intangible thing handed down by a predecessor. And both speak to what we know as archaeologists. We're deeply concerned with identifying, investigating, understanding, and reporting on remains that have been handed down to us from an earlier time. And those mostly tangible things that we've been handed from the past. We instinctively feel they're important and have value and can help us not only to understand the past, but to navigate the future as well. We want to share that understanding, share the opportunity to experience the thrill of discovery and to be involved in creating new stories and experiencing the benefits that that involvement can bring. It's no coincidence that several conference sessions over the next two days will pick up on the theme of data, and synthesis and communication and explore the, no the legacy of knowledge and understanding created when information is fair, findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. And of course, ensuring lasting an accessible record is one of the key ethical principles articulated the CEPA's code of conduct um, and recent work to revise and reform our, our standards, um, CEPA standards and further develop the suite of good practice guidance and toolkits for supporting archaeologists <laughs> to deliver this legacy. But as Penn touched on, we have to remember that legacies aren't always positive and we don't choose what we inherit. We can choose what we do with the situations we inherit, though, and we can choose the legacies we want to leave for future generations. The colonial legacy of our profession creates a challenging context that we can't ignore, as does the destructive impacts of more recent human interaction, including our own, with the environment. But archaeologists have the skill set and the mindset to respond to those challenges, and we know that the legacy of the past did not determine what kind of world future generations will inhabit. And I was thinking, well, when it comes to the way that we do things, the techniques, approaches, even the way our profession is structured, we can build on the legacies we've inherited, but we really don't need to be constrained by them. Archaeology is still a relatively young profession. The CBA may be that some race is 80, but the CFA's not yet 42, I think. Um, we seem very young. If the last 40 years or so have been characterised by emerging <laughs> professional structures, commercial business practices and competition. Mm. I really hope the next 40 years will see a shift towards greater collaboration and co-creation with organisations actively seeking ways to work together across disciplinary, institutional and national boundaries. And, and this has already happened in Scotland's archaeology strategy, the archaeology 2030 strategy in Northern Ireland and the 21st century challenges archaeology programme in England are already providing the mechanism for this to happen. These national strategies are focused on moving our profession forwards, promoting innovation and new ways of doing things, 
Um, and these are themes, again, that we'll be picking up tomorrow with sessions looking at the risks and rewards of innovation and showcasing new approaches, ideas and techniques in development led archaeology. SEEF has been closely involved in the development and delivery of all three strategic frameworks, so it's no surprise that they closely align with SEEF's own strategic goals and are aimed at maximising the benefits that archaeology delivers for society. See the strategic plans adopted in 2021 and sets out the aspiration that by 2030, CEPA accredited professionals will be setting and meeting improved standards for learning, competence and ethical practice. They will be trusted influences in the discipline and through their professionalism, they will, develop, they will deliver greater public benefit and they'll be better recognised for doing so. And that brings me to the, the final theme, the final element in the legacy theme that I really wanted to highlight, the theme of people, participation and skills. What is an archaeologist and who gets to be one? How do we inspire future generations to engage with their heritage through archaeology? And if they want to pursue that engagement into the professional world, how do we break down the barriers that make it difficult to pursue a career in archaeology? And here, I think, we really do need to move beyond those tired, tired old narratives that constrain our thinking and action. And that's just about who gets to be an archaeologist, how they get there, the need to struggle to prove, to prove commitment to the discipline um, and to put up with working conditions that don't always reflect 21st century needs and priorities. As I mentioned, the theme of dismantling negative legacies and building new ones was addressed in more detail in an online fringe session last week. And that explored where change is happening in the profession to dismantle those systemic barriers that stop people progressing through or even entering the profession in the first place. Alongside that session, we're currently reviewing our own processes or see processes um, to see how we can remove unfair barriers to accreditation in response to recommendations from research that we commissioned last year into sector inequalities. And there's a long way to go with that to implement those recommendations. But supporting new routes into a career in archaeology is one of our key strategies. And I'm really delighted that we're finally able to showcase the success of the Trailblazer apprenticeships in England over 10 years after the work started to develop apprenticeship standards for the historic environment. It's fantastic to hear from employers and apprentices who benefited from the apprenticeship programme as part of this opening address, which you'll, you'll hear about shortly. And also to welcome three of the training providers delivering the standards um, to the exhibition hall conference this year, Strode College, who are delivering our level four historic environment advice assistant standard, mm -hmm. Simon Sester College delivering the level three archaeological technician standard, and Bishop's Rose University, who've recently been approved to deliver the Level 7 Archaeological Specialist alongside um, the University of Wales Trinity St Davids, who are already delivering that standard. If you're interested in taking on an apprentice, if you're interested in finding out more about what the apprenticeship programme could offer you, please do stop by and have a chat with them over the next few days. Um, they can really help you navigate the process if you're looking to take on an apprentice. And while you're there, um, do take time to have a chat with Amanda on our, our new secret qualifications um, stand. We're always on the lookout for new apprentice and NEQ assessors to expand our qualifications offer. Um, it's a great way to give something back um, to the sector and to think about your own legacy actually and how we bring on the next, the next generation of archaeologists to support them. So you'll hear more about Mugby and Archaeology's experience of apprenticeships in just a moment. Um, our first keynote presentation this morning will highlight the del delivery of social value through development-led archaeology, showcasing the collaboration between the Coste and MOLA social value teams to propose a methodology for integrating social value practice with archaeology. Promoting ways in which archaeology can support social value outcomes and deliver lasting legacies for clients is also a key feature perceive as advocacy and communications work with external stakeholders and those outside our sector, the client sector and so on. And also the theme of our 2024 mm. client guide and those of you who've already sent us case studies for that, thank you very much. That will be published um, later this year and will be one of our key uh, communication tools with, with clients promoting the value of archaeology and what we do. 
So I just wanted to finish up, really, um, and, and let you hear more about the, uh, the, the exciting um, keynote presentations. Just thinking that the future of our profession, really, is dependent, uh, it's, it's, it's a theme that I've, I've spoken about many times, dependent on our ability to, prov to provide sustainable and equitable careers and to engage with other audiences across society. And we can all be agents of change to make that reality. And I hope that over the next few days, as you're informed and inspired and entertained over the conference sessions that we have for you, that you'll also find time to reflect a little bit on your own role in shaping our profession, how you all contribute to that, and how that's building a lasting legacy that we're leaving for the archaeologists of the future, and more particularly the communities that they serve. So um, enjoy the conference and enjoy the next two keynote speakers. Thank you very much.